team is going to pause the ball. But you can't quit. You can't let up. Knowles All Access is brought to you by the energy saving conservation programs of Tico People's Gas. Real Coca Cola taste with zero sugar and zero calories. Coca Cola Zero Sugar, taste the feeling. Welcome to Knowles All Access, where we take you inside Florida State Athletics. I'm Jay Sutton, and today we'll talk with head coach Leonard Hamilton to recap the wins over Syracuse and Pittsburgh. Then, we'll meet three freshmen who are making an impact on the women's basketball team this season. And later, Mike Martin Jr. and his team enter a new era of Florida State baseball. All that and much more is up ahead on Knows All Access. Coach, the Nose were able to stack up two more wins at home, improving the 14 and 0 at home on the season. But let's start with this Syracuse game. When you, when you look at that game and you look at the fact that you were able to hold Buddy Beheim scoreless, I think your bench outscored their bench 41 to 13. And Elijah Hughes, he had a big game, but it seemed like you all were able to get some stops on him when it mattered. When it mattered most, um, when you look at those factors, would you contribute this win to depth and defense? Another win based off depth and defense. There's no doubt that uh, the, the quality of our depth and, and, and our defense has, has always been the staple of our program, especially in the last few years. Uh, but uh, the, the win, a close game at home against a team that's with three guys that are basically have, have been unstoppable. We had to concentrate on at least trying not to hold one of them down, and and Beheim was the guy. Uh, we, we felt that he uh, was more of a, uh, a standing shooter that had really developed a one-on-one -on -one game, and so we we tried to defend him uh, accordingly. We wanted to have the same level of defensive execution on the other two players as well, but they're so talented. That, and they were on that particular night. Sometimes when you're going one-on-one -on -one and, and being able to make tough shots, you're going to have those off nights, but they were on that particular night. And it was a, a hot, closely contested game. I was glad that we were able to come with the victory, but we still showed a lot of vulnerability in the areas of our game that we need to improve. Yeah, and MJ Walker, you know, he hit three big threes in the first half. Then he had to leave the game, taking the shot to the face. and. He said he had to get 12 stitches, and I'll repeat that, 12 stitches, because I cringed when I heard it. I couldn't imagine coming back and playing, but he did. He was able to come back and hit some big threes at big moments and play great defensively. Is that just the football player, him, that toughness? I don't know if I can categorize it as the toughness of a football player. I just got some unusual toughness but that's beyond any sport. It's a mindset of determination and will that allow you to be able to concentrate and be focused enough to go back in the game and do what he did. When you get 12 stitches, you know, you have to be sewed up and then you have to, when it's in the interior of your mouth, the number of shots that you have to take to deaden the area so that they can sew you up is, is, is very challenging to, to endure. 
And so for him to come back and sit on the bench for 11 minutes of the first, the second half, and then come back in and play the last nine minutes is beyond my comprehension because that says something special about him more than anything else, his determination to just want to help his teammates to win the game. Morris lets fly, got a great look from three-point land under the net. Then they went a little bit cold thanks to the defense and the slam by Patrick Williams. Gallons, a turnover. Gray was there to stop it. On the dribble, he will kick it. And a three-pointer by Clay. Baseline cut on the slam. Patrick Williams, he's had the most sensational dunks of this ball game. So let's fast forward a little bit and let's talk about the pit game because you all were able to avenge a, um, the loss from earlier in the season with a 15 point win at home. And it was a game that you all played efficient. You shot efficient from three. You moved the ball well. I think you had 20 assists. Um, you, out you out rebounded them uh, 40 to 27. What did you learn about your team from this game? Well, there's no doubt that we were not very well prepared of going into the pit game there. Not because of anything other than it was the first game. Uh, it really, November the 6th, I believe, some, some uh, er, too early, if we anything. And we knew very little about them and their, their system and second year coach. And, and we just didn't go in there with the right frame of mind. They had not gotten the publicity. Uh, and I think it was very difficult and challenging for our guys mentally and emotionally to go in. And, and we were not ready. And they, they taught us a lot about ourselves, but I also think that it really helped motivate us to see that we can't take anybody lightly. And our guys were very determined in this particular game to, to go out and play better. I don't want to like to use the word revenge because if you have to have revenge to motivate you to go out and play well, that's not good. I mean, you have to have a lot of things to be revenged before, and I don't want to get those <laughs> lo that many losses. But on, on a serious note, I, I thought our guys were, were determined and focused that we were going to go out and play better, and I thought we did. Yeah, uh, and as I mentioned earlier, you improved to 14-0 and 0 at home uh, for the season. The only undefeated team in the ACC, 63-3 and 3 in your last 66 home games. So, Coach, spill the goods. <laughs> Please spill the goods. What, what's the secret to having the success at Hamsterdam, as they like to call it? Well, I, I think what we have done, we, we have we're working on a lot of last-minute details or uh, situations that I think gives us an opportunity to be familiar and more relaxed in those critical games when the game's on the line. But I think our staff has done a good job recognizing the strengths and weaknesses of our team. But our fan support has been tremendous. Uh, that gives you a level of comfortability uh, that sometimes you don't have when you're on the road. Uh, I, I, we've had good players that have really bought into our system when we play to, play to each other. I think it's a combination of a lot of things. And, uh, we we, we want to keep that going because of the support that we've gotten. We want to be sure our fans how much we appreciate them by going out and giving a tremendous effort. Our students have been unbelievable. Uh, they got behind our team and they're giving us a tremendous lift. Uh, I think it's a combination of a lot of things. I like the athletic department and the university has upgraded the facility and made it a very beautiful uh, place for us to play in. Uh, the game experience for our fans uh, have improved tremendously. So I think it's a combination of a lot of things. We just want to try to keep it going as long as we can. Yeah, you, you definitely want to keep it going, Coach, but you have to leave Hamsterdam for a little bit because you have to head up to North Carolina and face a tough NC State team. And we'll talk about that a little later in the show. So stick around for that and much more coming up on Knows All Access. Coming up, we'll get to know the freshmen on the women's basketball team. State women's basketball team hit the trifecta this season with this year's freshman class. River Baldwin, Sammy Puisis, and London Clarkson have quickly earned significant playing time. It's definitely a lot different than high school. It's faster, the competition is a lot better. I'm happy that we all get to be a part of it our freshman year. From a small town in Alabama, River Baldwin was ranked 27th in the ESPNW rankings. A natural athlete, she was a shot put champion and all-state volleyball player in high school, but ultimately chose to pursue collegiate basketball. But growing up, she wasn't sure she had it in her. I never really thought I could do it, honestly. 
and it was just like my family really encouraged me and put me in the positions to um, just succeed in whatever I'm trying to do. And succeed she has. Leading the team in blocks only midway through the season, Baldwin is the first freshman at FSU since 2008 to receive two consecutive ACC Player of the Week honors. Ohio native Sammy Puisis came in ranked seventh at her position. Considered one of the most elite shooters in the country, Puisis has made her mark this season, averaging 42% from the outside. Her accuracy from beyond the arc led to the team's win over Clemson earlier this season. Puisis on the money. When I got on the court, I just knew um, they would look for me and I just let it fly every time. Although new to the team, Baldwin and Puisis weren't strangers prior to donning the garnet and gold. They met at an FSU basketball camp in high school and played together on the 2019 McDonald's All-American team. London Clarkson was among the top 20 post players in her class. She brings a strong left-handed game to the Knolls and an unmatchable energy that brings extra spark to the team. I don't know, I just like to be positive and give the room energy and lift my teammates up. That's definitely like in your personality. Yeah. Although each of the freshmen received multiple offers from other schools, the welcoming nature of FSU's coaches and staff made their choice a simple one. The thing that drew me here was just the family atmosphere. They're always very welcoming and they seemed really invested in our lives even before we were here. That's it, Rip! Good! They give us a lot of resources, so they're always helping us. Even just like if we need help academically, they're always checking in on us. Mm -hmm. like that. Mm -hmm. Their teammates have also made it an easier transition for the freshmen as they take on the rough style of ACC play. I think our teammates do a good job of involving us and encouraging us and letting us know that they want us to succeed. We're learning from a lot of the stuff they're going through, so I feel like in a way it's going to make us like better leaders once we get in their position. With their talent and passion to become better players, these Florida State freshmen are already creating their own FSU legacy. I'm Logan Ward for Knowles All Access. Coming up, Florida State baseball enters a new era in 2020. For Mike Martin Jr., it's no secret that greatness runs in the family. After his father's 40-season run that saw 17 College World Series appearances, eight ACC championships, and an induction into the FSU Hall of Fame, the new head coach undoubtedly has big shoes to fill. But Coach Martin has big plans for the Seminoles, hoping to modernize the team to make them even more competitive as they enter this new era. You know, I took bits and pieces from a lot of the guys that uh, you know I played for, and uh, it kind of you know, made me into the, the person that I am. My skill set when it comes to coaching and not afraid to, you know, tell kids that, you know, not exactly what they want to hear. And, uh, but it's all, you know, in the name of winning and making them the best player they can be. I think it's more of the off the field stuff where you really see a change, you know, we're really getting involved in the mental health and the, the mental side of the game. And that's something I've really never experienced being in college. You know, we're really taking that seriously. Along with a winning philosophy, Coach Martin has brought some new faces to the coaching staff with pitching coach Jim Bellinger and assistant coach Mike Metcalf. I'm around Metcalf more just being a hitter, but I can tell that Jimmy's doing a lot of good stuff with the pitchers. They're working hard and I think he's bringing sort of a new light to them and they're a lot, they're full of energy these days and uh, I think he's gonna do a really good job with them this year. Coach Martin has been noted for his special relationship with the team, taking time to build a rapport with each player. He encourages his new coaches to do the same, extending the relationships with players beyond baseball. You know, I think it's more of that personal relationship that really, you know, makes an impact on a player's life rather than, you know, things just involved with baseball. And I think that's one thing that Coach Martin's really tried to do is bring guys in that care about the player, you know, off the field and not just on the field. You know, Chase, uh, it's his team, but he's with those pitchers nonstop. Um, so they're in very good hands. From an offensive standpoint, you got guys like, you know, Reese Albert um, that have been around the program that know, you know, what we expect and the amount of effort that we put into things. Um, so it's kind of a little bit of both. Uh, you combine that with the coaching staff and we kind of, 
have stepped it up, you know, a little bit energy-wise and uh, intensity level. Um, it's made for a good fall and early spring. Despite the changes of leadership going into the 2020 season, the culture of camaraderie is enough to bind the Seminoles together. A theme not too uncommon in Seminole sports, Coach Martin hopes to support and challenge his new team in order to continue the tradition of excellence. But this year we've got Chase Haney still here back for his fifth year and uh, he's one of my best friends and uh, it's great to see him assume the leadership role and honestly most of the juniors and myself, CJ, Connor Grady, Jonas Galaro, all those guys are assuming that sort of role just because we've been here together for the past three years. Being the captain of this team is something I really take pride in and I have to show up every day and be consistent, you know, bring that energy um, just to you know, kind of bring everyone together, you know, make sure we're on the right path, you know, going into the season. As for Coach Martin, his focus lies on moving the team forward toward greatness. Well, I, I wanted, you know, to continue a lot of the things that, you know, Levin put in place, but uh, I want to modernize it. I want to get more into analytics. Uh, I want to recruit earlier. Um, you know, I want guys to understand, when their parents to understand that they choose Florida State. They're choosing, sure, a brand and, you know, great tradition, but they're also going to be, you know, updated techniques and things that we're going to utilize throughout to make them you know, the best person and player they can be. I'm Keenan Scott for Knowles All Access. Coming up, we'll preview the upcoming matchups against NC State and Louisville. Well, Coach, you all will be heading back up to North Carolina, um, to PNC Arena, to face a solid NC State team who's coming off a big blowout win against Duke. And they would love to get another win against a top 10 team to improve their tournament chances. So talk to us about this matchup. It's an extremely difficult matchup because they have what you call tough shot takers and tough shot makers. That, that's a term that you don't use very much and which means that they have guys who can make shots when they are guarded closely. And that's a skill that you very seldom have uh, in that many different players that are capable of doing that. They make shots that we don't even allow our players to even attempt because <laughs> of they have the ability to make uh, shots with a degree of difficulty. They drive uh, to the hole, finish with either hand. They create off the dribble. And when those kind of guys are on, uh, they're, they're hard to hammer. Most of the time, you, people utilize their offense to move the ball and they try to create open looks and high percentage shots for the for in, the individuals. On this particular team, they just give a guy the ball and, and they go score the ball. And I think you saw evidence of that in the uh, Duke game where they kind of scored at will without any passing at all. They took turns just giving the ball going one-on-one, -on -one, almost professional, like NBA pro-type moves. So they present a different challenge for us, and they're hungry for a victory. And I listened to Coach K in his post-game show talk about how hungry, they, how much hungrier they were for a victory than, than Duke was. And so we, we, have, we got our hands full. Yeah, and you know, you mentioned the Duke game. They came out, I think, uh, with a 10, 10 to one run in that game. Um, and they never really looked back after that. So playing in that tough environment at PNC Arena, would that be the message to your team to come out and try to match their energy and effort and not fall behind early? Well, well hopefully, you know, we would just be who we are. Now we have had a tendency to uh, fall behind early and then catch back up. I'm not real sure you have the luxury of doing that on the road this late in the season. So we're gonna have to do a better job of getting off to a better start. Absolutely, Coach, and there's another big game Monday night, but I'm not going to ask you about it because I know you're focused on NC State right now, right? <laughs> no doubt about that. <laughs> I wish I had the luxury to look past uh, Saturday game to Monday's University of Louisville game. I'm not real sure I'm even allowed a word to come out of my mouth <laughs> until, until we get through the game right. on Saturday. Keep ourselves focused on that which we can control and next up. It was North Carolina State. There you go. Well, Coach Ham won't mention it. I'll say it. <laughs> uh, FSU takes on Louisville here Monday night. So make sure you come out and check that out. And thanks as always, Coach. For Coach Hamilton, I'm Jay Sutton. And we'll see you next week right here on Knows All Access. Knows All Access is brought to you by the energy-saving conservation programs of Tico People's Gas. 
Real Coca-Cola taste with zero sugar and zero calories. Coca-Cola Zero Sugar. Taste the feeling.